Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are uh, just jumping very quickly back out to the uh, Rosalina Memorial Station because we have a problem. You can see here our electric charge is showing like uh, negative 6.2. That is a huge drain. Um, something is not right. And in just some brief poking around, you see this one random RTG I have out here. We can click on that one. We can't click on any of these. Uh, they have become their own vessel somehow magically. Uh, so I think we have to get somebody out here to reattach the pipe. Uh, I don't know how well you can see it, but it does look like that pipe. Oh no, is that whole port not connected anymore? Oh no. Oh no. We don't have an engineer on staff. I don't think we can fix this. Uh oh. Yeah, we got two scientists and a pilot. Uh, this is a problem. One that needs to be rectified, like, right now. So, uh, I guess we're going to start turning some lights off. Yeah, and make sure all our scrubbers are deactivated. Uh, you don't have a scrubber, do you? Your scrubber should already be turned off. Okay, good. And your scrubber is off. Good. Uh, that's... That should be it. I think all the avionics for everything are already deactivated. Yeah, that one's deactivated. That one's deactivated. Fantastic. Okay, well... Uh, we don't have ports on the rover anymore either. We could siphon. That's really just one more RTG. So uh, I guess we're going to have to evacuate our crew a little sooner than anticipated. So I'm going to jump to the Space Center. I'll pick you guys up in just a few. All right, well, we are out here on the launch pad. Uh, this is something I've just lovingly called the uh, Resartemis. Uh, it is an Artemis capsule uh, with a slightly different uh, command pod. This is basically a uh, retrofit of a Artemis 3, and it is sitting on top of a, a DN-2BX uh, because it really doesn't have a whole lot of weight to it, and because there's no lander, there's no accessory pod, it's just the Artemis, and all we have to do is get it in orbit of the moon, and then bring it home. So uh, the weight restrictions here are a whole lot lower than before, so we can kind of skimp out on the launch vehicle. Uh, what we really need to do is set Moon as target and bring up our uh, rendezvous planner. Ta-da! 47.3 degrees inclination offset. So we're just going to uh, time warp a whole bunch and uh, let this get down to a more reasonable level so we can launch their return craft Hopefully get them off the moon. I mean, battery drain doesn't happen when it's not the targeted vessel, but uh, I feel like that's a little bit of cheatiness if I just leave them there and they've got this massive power draw and we're not doing anything about it. Although I do feel bad about the uh, science that they have yet to transmit home. Uh, I guess we're just going to have to uh, chalk that up to mission losses. Uh, emergencies happen. And if only we had an engineer on staff, maybe we could have done something about this. All right, just a little bit more. Okay, I'll risk it. About three zero, I think we can work with that. And back down on the launch pad. You'll see there's no crew in this vehicle. We only have three seats in the Artemis capsule and we need all three of them to bring our crew home safe and sound. So that's our engines. Just a quick double check of the staging. I didn't build that this long ago. So it shouldn't be screwy, but it, yeah, see, look at that. Ah, uh, where's our HG3? There it is. You need to be here. No. Where is the appropriate stage set? There it is. And that's RCS and Retrofire. Okay. Sure am glad I checked that. That's Booster Sep, Stage Sep. HG3, bearing sep, engines on the restartimus, unnecessary, unnecessary, reentry, shoots, unnecessary. Okay, we're good. Uh, throttle is at the full. SAS is on. Ignition. That looks like a good light. And it's just a uh, little bit of a slow crawl off the pad, but we got a 1.4 liftoff thrust to weight ratio. Uh, none too shabby, I would say, for something of this stature. 
Anyway, uh, yeah, two RS-25s and a pair of uh, RD-171Ms will be taking us most of the way to orbit. Uh, looks like we're going to have to round it out on the HG-3, not a big deal. We got like 4,300 meters per second up there. Uh, I do kind of anticipate having to round out our uh, TLI on the back of the Restartimus itself. Uh, but we'll get to that when we get to that. So I will pick all of you up in order. Now I should go on to uh, stipulate that this version of the uh, Artemis was uh, actually a prototype that I was planning on testing from a uh, low Earth orbit re-entry first, and then maybe a long moon slingshot re-entry. Uh, also, it has uh, several revisions to it that I had Hope to incorporate into an Artemis 4 variant, uh, probably not in time for this Mars window, but maybe the next one and sending a, a uh, secondary crew out to Harmonia Station. There's booster set. But uh, we can get more into those changes uh, a little later. It does involve uh, trying to recover a little bit more of the spacecraft, maybe not uh, letting so much plutonium burn up in high atmosphere. But uh, Outside of those revisions, it is a lot lighter because it is not a full-on Artemis IV, thus the choice in launch vehicle. Um, these two RS-25s and the single HG-3 will be more than enough to get us to orbit uh, with, I don't know, a little bit to spare. Probably not quite enough to hit the moon, but uh, like I said before, we don't really need a whole hell of a lot. Um, we just need to put it in orbit so that we can get our crew home, which is the main objective. Uh, you will notice the obvious lack of a launch escape system. It was left off for the obvious reason that there's no crew to save, and should the vehicle blow up, well then it just blows up. It's not like saving the command pod in this particular flight would have done us a lot of good in rescuing our crew off the surface of the moon, so, uh, you know, why incorporate the weight if we're uh, just using this as a test bed for future modifications to an Artemis IV system? No big deal. Anyway, we are coming up on main engine cutoff and HG3 ignition as we uh, try to get ourselves into a nice low orbit here. A, uh, you can see the camera shifting. There's stage set and a good light on the HG3. Uh, this will carry us the rest of the way to orbit. It will also use its second ignition to get us on our way to the moon, although I fully anticipated that we would be finishing our orbital insertion on the back of the uh, service engines which in this case are uh, a cluster of six uh, AJ-10-118Ks. Um, again, just a, another test bed to see how a different system would work over our Apollo um, service propulsion engine. But uh, I'm going to turn you back over to old me as we are rounding out this uh, two-orbit burn. All right, well, uh, 212 by 155 on probably what was a fairly terrible ascent profile. We've got uh, 2723 left in our HG3 stage, uh, not enough to get us quite to the moon. Uh, this 335 is a little misleading. Our primary tank here is turned off. That'll bring us up to 3443. Not a bad figure, all things considered. So uh, we just need a plot for the moon and start to really kind of shake our asses on this one so we can get this rescue underway and uh, get our crew off the moon and returned home safe. Uh, all right, come on, come on, a little bit, a little bit. Okay, there's an encounter, focus view. Let's uh, tune this in a bit, of course. We'll have to retune it again later and not an encounter not an encounter not an encounter encounter not an encounter okay that lacks periapsis 881 we'll tune that it's a uh, it's a good guide obviously i'm going to screw it up a bunch so yeah we do have an ignition left here don't we yes one ignition remaining fantastic I am, of course, going to be uh, using all of that uh, fuel from the thrusters also. Maybe we can get like 2,712 meters per second out of this burn. <laughs> Just uh, basically an about face. Came up during the wrong time. All right. 
And we'll just halt it there because I don't use persistent rotation because I am a cheater McCheater face. All right, we are three minutes, 44 seconds out from our burn. Uh, it says the burn will take three minutes and 50 seconds. That obviously, what are you, who told you to do that? Uh, all right. We're going to get angled back into the node, and then we're going to fire our HG3. Uh, I'm leaving a lot of extra time because our uh, rescue Artemis does not have the thrust to weight ratio that this uh, HG3 upper stage does. There we go. That looks pretty good. Let's ullage it in. Very stable. Awesome. Ignition. That's a good light. Fantastic. All right. Point back at that node if you do. Thank you, sir. And let's just lay on the H key. I'm actually going to go back and relock that tank. There is another tank down here that I don't have access to currently to go lock. But you know, whatever. It's just a little bit of thruster fuel. Uh, I think we can. I think we can spare it. Now, uh, just another in a uh, long series of uh, HG3 powered uh, orbital insertion burns. Um, as stated before, we will be trying to uh, push through all of the thruster fuel. I will kind of get annoyed eventually and go uh, lock the bottom tanks on our uh, rescue Artemis, as well as uh, draining out the rest of the thruster fuel from the HG3 stage, try to replenish what little we've burned off. Um, not that it's of any particular consequence. We're coming up on here on uh, HG3 burnout and stage set. Yep, and a couple of taps on the ignition switch. Uh, all six AJ-10s are lit. We will get our solar panels extended and just uh, verify that the rest of the system here is working a-okay. Looks like uh, everything is fired up pretty well. We've got a very decent thrust to weight ratio. We're actually going to come into the moon a little fast. Well, that is a collision course. No big deal. Uh, we're just going to touch up a little bit here with RCS and bring ourselves in nice and low. There we go. That is Perfect. Oh, I don't need, yeah. 461 RCS off. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, add maneuver. Let's see what our capture burden will look like. We need to get really, really low if uh, we want to have a hope of that ascent module being able to rendezvous with us. 57 on that side, 187 on that side. 118 by 53. Eh, well, all right, I'm going to poke at this for a second or two. 65, 61 for 813 meters per second. It also brings us nowhere near the station. That's interesting. How much do I, well, it, I don't know. It would be like waiting for it to be all the way over here. That might be waiting too long, but we'll make that determination when we get there, once it's in orbit, then we can start figuring out the rest of this game. So we're just going to go ahead and time we're not all on out and make our orbital insertion. All right, we're about two minutes out. We should probably kick our RCS system back on and uh, face our node. And of course, there go the dogs. All right, we're just gonna get to about the minute mark. That's good enough. Ullage, ullage, ullage. Solid, light them up. It's a good light. All six engines firing normally. You notice that we are using a cluster of uh, six of the AJ-10 118Ks instead of our normal service propulsion engine. Uh, it was entirely done on the fact that uh, speed uh, was more of an issue with this craft than normal thrust to weight ratio mattered more than efficiency, although it's uh, it's doing pretty well for itself considering, I don't know, it is also very light. 
has a lot less to push around than uh, the normal Artemis does, and does benefit greatly from that. The 118s are actually uh, a lot heavier than some of the other uh, AJ-10 Advanced series, but they have uh, infinite ignitions, which is a huge selling point. Okay, 69 by 48, that is not bad, actually. I will take it. I will also take a quick save. There we go, quick saving, and let's just uh, check our location. Yeah, we're, uh, we're pretty far off, but man, in just the couple of days it took us to get around here, they made it almost all the way around. So, uh, yeah, focus view is still set to the moon. We can just let them take a couple of orbits. This is the fastest that we can warp. So this might be a, uh, a good bit of waiting. But uh, I think that might actually do it for this episode. So actually, let me come out of time warp and get a nice uh, screeny. I've been kind of neglecting to do that lately, and I feel kind of bad about it. But uh, next time, I will probably do all of this waiting stuff uh, without dragging all of you through it, that seems a little unfair, and get the crew loaded up, collect uh, what data they can or what's left, load them into the uh, ascent vehicle, and go for broke. There's really not much else that we have to lose here, so <sighs> yeah, let's, let's all keep our fingers crossed, because we're certainly going to need a bit of luck to get them off the surface and up to this thing all in one piece. Although, really, if they can hit orbit, Rescue Artemis can do the rest. I hope. Just depends on how much life support they can bring. Anyway. Alright, well that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So, until then, see you later.